Sutton Foster, would you please present yourself for the awarding of the honorary degree? Sutton L. Foster, you are an award-winning actress, singer, and dancer who has made a career in theater, television, and music. Your illustrious work on Broadway includes two Tony Awards, one for your 2002 role in Thoroughly Modern Millie, and another last year for Anything Goes. You have received three other Tony nominations as well as three Outer Critics Circle Awards, two Fred Astaire Awards, and two Drama Desk Awards. While your cast recordings have included everything from Little Women to Shrek the Musical, you also have a musical career beyond Broadway. You have recorded two solo albums, including 2009's Wish, which received much critical acclaim. You have performed in many of the world's finest venues, including Carnegie Hall, and you have been part of the Lincoln Center's American Songbook series. You also have starred in the ABC family television pilot to be aired June 11th, Bunheads, a dance drama. Your appearances on television also include Sesame Street, Law and Order, Order Special Victims Unit, and The Flight of the Concords. Despite your demanding schedule, you have kindly taken time for our students from the Department of Theater and Dance in a variety of ways for several years. You have taught classes here at the university, performed at Sursa Hall, conducted guest workshops in New York City, and mentored students for auditions and callbacks. You provided expert advice to an immersive learning team that adapted Kathy Day's novel, The Circus in Winter, into a musical, which premiered last September here on campus. That musical recently earned three major awards at the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival, including outstanding production of a new work. Earlier this year, you co-directed along with Bill Jenkins, chair of our Department of Theater and Dance, a university theater production of The Drowsy Chaperone, six years after earning a Tony nomination for your role in that musical's Broadway debut. In honoring you today, Ball State recognizes your remarkable and varied talents, your illustrious career on Broadway, your magnanimous mentoring of and collaborating with Ball State students, and your inspiring devotion to expanding the reach of the arts and the importance they play in our world. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I hereby confer upon you, Sutton L. Foster, the degree of Doctor of Arts Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, and award you this diploma in testimony thereof, and present you with the academic hood for this degree. And that's for you. Thank you. Thank you. I never thought I'd be a doctor. I thought I might play one someday, but this is quite an honor. I'd like to thank the Board of Trustees of this incredible university, President Gora, Dean Kavam, and the wonderful faculty and students of the Department of Theater and Dance. But I'd also like to thank all of you sitting out here today. I'm in awe of the work, dedication, and commitment of every single student from every single major, and I'm humbled by the love and sacrifice of all the parents and spouses and family members of all these students. The real honor I feel in this honorary degree is that of being associated with all of you and knowing that we share a connection with this wonderful institution. I only hope that I can be worthy of it. I didn't always want to be an actress. When I was a little girl, I had big, big dreams. I dreamt of being a bank teller. <laughs> I did, it's true. I loved the idea of working in the drive through window, greeting people, taking their money, and giving lollipops in return. I even had a mini cash register at home and a calculator and my parents let me open my first bank account when I was 10. So it's ironic that, that I ended up in such an unstable, unpredictable career as actor. So many people say acting is a brain surgery and they have a point. I'll admit that basically I play pretend for a living. 
To some folks, a job like that might seem insignificant. I'm just singing and dancing, right? Well, yes, it isn't brain surgery, but it's not insignificant either. It's my career and my passion. I've learned more about myself through this profession than I ever could have imagined, and about life in general. And I want to share some things that I've experienced that might help some of you as you move into the opening act of your adult lives. I'll bet that most of you have a lot more in common with me than you think. I was born in a small college town in Georgia, a bit like Muncie. My parents, Helen and Bob Foster, were good, upstanding, middle-class people. My dad worked for sales for GM, primarily Chevy, and my brother Hunter and I grew up very modestly. A lot of people ask if we grew up listening to show tunes when we were kids, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. My mom loved the movies and once wanted to be a model, but as far as Broadway and theater, it was not something that we knew a lot about. I, much to the dismay of my parents and brother, had a lot of energy, um, and I was always spazzing around the house. So my mother, in an effort to channel this energy, got me into ballet class when I was four. I think she thought that ballet would give me some grace. Instead, I just ended up being a spaz and a tutu. But it was right then and there that I knew that I loved to dance. Of course, I tried other things besides dancing, like basketball, but I was a complete disaster on the court because I would dance instead of dribble. I would dance everywhere, in the house, the hallways at school, up and down the aisles at the grocery store. And then after a few years at the dance studio and me terrorizing the local folk with my ronde jambes, as fate would have it, my dance studio got a call about a local production of Annie at the Augusta Players Community Theater. As I said before, we didn't really know much about theater in our house. My brother had done a couple of community theater shows and I had been in the chorus of A Christmas Carol, but that was it. Well, I didn't want to audition for Annie, but my mom encouraged me, and so I went. I had to sing first, and apparently, everyone got really quiet when I started to sing at the piano. I was oblivious, and when I finished, I was just happy it was over so I could get back home to watch Fraggle Rock. But later that day, we got the phone call. They cast me as Annie, and it would be that experience at age 10 getting to sing such great songs as Maybe and Tomorrow on a bare stage to a packed house in one of the great all-time musicals that had me hooked. Since Annie, I've played all sorts of characters, showgirl, princess, evangelist, dog catcher. In 2000, I was playing a street urchin, Eponine, in the Broadway touring production of Les Miserables. I was making a pretty handsome salary, the most money I'd ever made, and I was playing a role I had dreamed of since I was 13 years old. I had played the role for over a year when the producers asked me if I would take over Eponine on Broadway, permanently. It was an incredible deal, more money, a guaranteed long-term employment, and a chance to play my dream role on Broadway. However, I had just auditioned for the lead character of Millie in a new show called Thoroughly Modern Millie. The show was scheduled to go to La Jolla Playhouse in San Diego to work out the kinks before it possibly came to New York and Broadway. So before I said yes to Les Mis, I wanted to see if I landed this incredible role in this brand new musical. So I anxiously waited for the phone call from my agent about Millie, and when he called, I got the bad news. I didn't get it. And I was devastated. And as I'm holding the phone, I'm thinking, well, it's okay. At least I still have my dream role in Les Mis. However, my agent wasn't finished. They want you to be the understudy, he said. So my two choices, guaranteed dream role in one of the biggest hits on Broadway versus understudying the lead in a brand new musical that may or may not ever be seen again outside the state of California. What would you do? When I was a kid, I would fearless, fearlessly jump into the swimming pool, but then almost drown because I didn't know how to swim. Nevertheless, this attitude towards life has served me well. Say yes to opportunity. Sink or swim, it'll change your life. So I decided, much to the dismay of a lot of people around me, to take the leap and accept the understudy position in Millie. It was an opportunity and a chance to work on a new show with new people, and I really liked it. I believed in its potential. So I went to La Jolla with the show and worked really hard learning my part as a chorus member and learning the role of Millie as the understudy. I was going to make sure that I was good in the part in the event I ever had to go on. A few weeks into rehearsals, the woman they cast as Millie got sick, and I stepped in for her for a few days. I didn't think much about it. That was my job. 
I learned the role and I did the best I could while she was out. About three days later, they asked me if I would take over the role. I did. And the rest, as they say, is history. The show was incredibly successful and eventually moved to Broadway with me as the unknown starlet, and I won my first Tony Award in that role. It was a huge hit on Broadway, and it changed my career forever. You have to have the courage to go with your gut and the willingness to take the smaller job. Like life in theater, it doesn't pay to have a big ego. No job should be too small for you. If I didn't take the understudy position because I was too proud or felt it was beneath me, then I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today. So say yes. Get coffee for people, run errands, make an impression as a hard worker, someone who is willing, and when the opportunity arrives for you to show people what you got, show them. Who knows what can happen? I love what I do for a living. I love it so much that sometimes I'm surprised, surprised that I get paid to do it. But all work is still work, no matter what you do or how much you love it. I'm proud of my work, and I'm a self-proclaimed workaholic. I pour myself into my craft. But when I'm 80 years old and I look back on my life, I know I won't say, gosh, I really wish I had worked more. It has taken me a long time to find balance in my life, to realize what is truly important and what I value most, and that's real relationships. In my life and work, Relationships are essential. Actors constantly move from job to job. Some jobs last two weeks, while others can last two years. You are constantly working with new people, constantly starting over. You need a base to come back to, family, friends, friends who become family. I'm sure many of you have formed those kind of relationships during your time here at Ball State. And here's the thing, as you move through your life, you'll discover that real, true, intimate, loving relationships don't take away from your work or life or creativity, they add to it. Invest in your relationships and you'll reap untold rewards. Believe me, the energy you put out into the world, not just into your work and art, but into your life, that energy comes back to you in beautiful ways. I know it sounds woo-woo-y, but it's true. And while the ever-changing life of an actor makes you eternally grateful for these relationships, it also allows you new and daunting challenges at every turn. It's taught me to be open, willing to adapt, to see things differently. Today, as college graduates, you might be thinking, woohoo, I'm finally done learning. But the exciting truth is, you never are. I had the pleasure of working with Tony, Oscar, and Golden Globe award-winning actor Joel Gray, my co-star in Anything Goes, who just turned 80 last month. He turned to me one day and said, I've never been happier. I keep learning more and more about myself every day. At 80 years old, he is still learning about himself, and that excites me greatly. The late Steve Jobs, who was not an actor, of course, but someone I identify with because he was so passionate about his work, said in his commencement speech to Stanford in 2005 that he asked himself every day, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. I really like this question. It's a great tool for taking stock and challenging the status quo. But you have to have the courage to answer it honestly and then act on the answer. You must be the author of your own life. You have the power to do what you want with it. You can continue on your path or you can change that path at any time. It's your life after all. There's one more bit of advice that I'd like to share, and it's one that most of the theater and dance kids recognize. My best advice to you, no matter what your profession is, is don't be a jerk. It just doesn't pay to be a jerk. When they talk about climbing the ladder of success, it really pays to be kind to the ones you meet along the way. Kindness, respect, all that good stuff, it just goes a long way. As an actor, you never know what your next job will be, and you don't know who might be in a position to give it to you. It's exciting and terrifying. But if you've been to a jerk to someone who might be part of your next opportunity, then you're in deep doo-doo. No matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a pastor, or an actor, just don't be a jerk. To make it in any profession, in any job, you have to work hard and find a way to love it. All forms of success, from being a great mother to being a great actor, take tenacity and determination. They say for every light on Broadway, there is a broken heart an unrealized dream. 
And that's the same in every profession. So you have to want it more than anyone else. And you have to be your own champion. Be your own superstar. Blaze your own path. Say yes to opportunity. Follow your instincts. Be eager and passionate. Keep learning. Nurture your real, lasting relationships. Don't be a jerk. And free your imagination so you can become all that you want to be. Thank you so much, and congratulations to the class of 2012 of Ball State University.